what are esters, eh? In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what esters are, and I'm going to let you know how some of them smell, so you start to get an idea of how you might want to use them in your perfumes. If you're interested in that, stay tuned and watch the rest of the video. Okay then, so what are esters? Well, esters are a class of chemical compound. Actually, an ester is a chemical structural feature. So it's to do with the specific groups of atoms that are inside the molecules that you're looking at. It's not something in perfumery more like an odor descriptor, something like marine or citrus or woody. You could have certain molecules of aroma chemicals which you would class in these olfactory descriptors, but when we say something's an ester, that's not so much a specific olfactory description, rather it's simply a chemical uh, classification of the particular construction, we could say, of atoms in the molecule. So this is a bit like an acetate. I did a video on acetates a while back. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. And in fact, acetates are a subclass of esters, so they are quite related. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in to draw for you exactly what an ester is. So hopefully you can understand what it means for something to be an ester. I think the easiest way to understand what an ester actually is, is simply to go and draw it out. So what an ester is, is when you have an R group, an alkyl group, you've got a single bond to a carbon, that's double bonded to an oxygen, that carbon again is single bonded to an oxygen, and that oxygen is single bonded to another alkyl group. I'll put an apostrophe here to show that it doesn't have to be the same as the first R group. If you don't understand this chemical notation, then I'll put a link in the description and you can go and check out my video on chemical notation so you can understand what this diagram actually means. Now looking at this, you may notice that this ester is actually very similar to the acetate we drew out in the acetate video. So if we go and draw out an acetate, we can see that for an acetate we have a very similar structure, which is this structure here. The only difference is that this R group is replaced by this line, or if we draw it out fully, what that represents, it's this CH3. So all an acetate really is, is a specific type of ester, where the one of the R groups, but it has to be this one right next to the C double bond O, is simply a CH3. So that's a carbon with three hydrogens. One of the reasons that these esters and these acetates are so common is that you can use any different combination of these R groups. Every time it says R, you can substitute that for something else. So obviously there's a lot of potential combinations that you can make. So let's just talk about quickly how you might go and make one of these. One way of making esters is something called a condensation reaction. So a condensation reaction is simply when you take an alcohol and you react it with a carboxylic acid. So you'll be unsurprised to know that the structure of a carboxylic acid is actually some kind of alcohol group, and it's got this C double bond O, and then it's just got an OH at the end. So that's a carboxylic acid. And then for the alcohol, we've simply got a OH group, and that can be attached to any alcohol group. Now, you may be used to alcohol as something you drink. You would think, surely that's a single molecule, right? And the common alcohol we drink, so that is actually a single molecule indeed, and that one's called ethanol. And that one is when you have this OH, and attached to that, you've got a CH2 and a CH3. So that's a carbon with two hydrogens, carbon with three hydrogens. But that chain could be shorter, it could be longer, it could have different things attached to it. And while that wouldn't be alcohol as in the ethanol that's in alcohol that we drink, in chemical terms, in a chemistry context, it would be classed as an alcohol just because it's got that OH group on it. So moving back to our condensation reaction. What is condensation to begin with? Well, you have condensation on your window, for example, when it's cold, and you have water appearing on the window, and that's because that water is being removed from the air. And this reaction is pretty similar. You can see you've got this OH and this H on the carboxylic acid and the alcohol respectively. And you can imagine that we may want to go and simply remove those all together as a H2O molecule. So when we've done that, essentially we're left with this carbon over here of the carboxylic acid. 
and this oxygen on the alcohol. So you can imagine we can join those together instead. And when we go and do that, we write that out as our C double bond O, and then that carbon is now bonded to this oxygen from the alcohol and the other alcohol group, and that's exactly the same as our ester structure. So that's all there is to it. I mean, obviously, this all proceeds by a chemical mechanism which explains more de in more detail why the, the reaction proceeds in that way. But at this level, all we really need to know is that that's what happens. And we can use that to imagine why we can basically have any different combination of carboxylic acid and alcohol making our ester. All right, so now we know what esters are, let's talk a little bit about how they're used in perfumery and what they smell like. So a lot of esters are fruity smells. And for that reason, a good use case or a common use case for esters is to use them in things like fruit accords. So I've got right here, allyl hexanoate, which I used in the pineapple accord, which I made, which is an ester. So if I go and smell that, and this is at 1% dilution, It has a very uh, fruity pineapple kind of like scent. It really smells a bit like pineapple sweets. And even at 1%, it's very strong and very pungent. Actually, I find a lot of esters at 10% um, are far too strong and really completely overpower you. I'm just gonna write down Al hexanoate so we can come back to it if we need to. 10%. So this is probably what I would say is one of the main things to think about when you're thinking about esters is fruity accords. Now, not all esters have to be fruity, for example. So another common kind of smell you can get from esters is kind of unpleasant smells. Uh, so you could get um, kind of cheesy smells, vinegary smells, those kind of um, bad smells, you might want to call them. Um, a lot of those are caused by esters as well. And then because an ester is really just a structural feature, it's not necessarily um, really a particular class of smells. Um, actually, within the esters, you can find a load of other smells that you wouldn't have expected. So for example, uh, if you look at the salicylates, and I did a video back a while ago on salicylates, if you actually look, you'll see that the salicylate as a group itself is just like the acetate, a subclass of esters. So if you remember, the benzyl salicylate was used as a modifier um, and the amyl salicylate was often used in fougere accords. I thought it smelled a little bit soapy, had a slight violet aspect to it. So not a typical fruity smell like a strawberry or a banana, that kind of thing. Um, those salicylates, again, technically still esters. So it just goes to show that when you hear the term ester, um, you don't necessarily have to think, oh, it's gonna be a fruity smell. Um, it, it's literally just something to do with the way it's structured. So uh, let's go through some of the other esters I have here. So I've got ethyl propionate. And again, this is diluted to 1% because it's super strong when it's on its own. And ethyl, ethyl propionate is something I find quite interesting. It's essentially a rum smell. If you go and buy kind of rum uh, food flavoring for like cake baking or something in the supermarket, it smells essentially like that. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And it's a very short lived, so it only lasts a few minutes or so. It's extremely volatile. So this is really up there with the most top of the top notes, but it really gives you this strong kind of rum like smell. So for example, this is part of the rum accord that I use in my vanilla wood perfume, which I sell for my brand. So a lot of esters follow this similar story, especially some of these fruity ones, that they are very volatile and lightweight. So they're really top notes. And one of the kind of telltale signs that a molecule is going to be very volatile 
and not always, but something that can give you a rough idea is simply the size of the molecule. Often the really small molecules, um, when you're looking at the molecular diagram, if it's really small, often that can contribute that to them being a top note. That said, you can't tell by that alone, because water, for example, um, water is also in a very small molecule, yet that doesn't evaporate very easily at all compared to other things of a similar size. And there are, of course, lots of reasons in chemistry as to why that is the case, and I won't bore you with it, but I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a good kind of rough principle, as in usually a really small molecule will be more of a top note and a really big molecule will be more of a base note. You see a lot of musks are really large molecules, but it's not a hard and fast rule. There are a lot of other factors that uh, contribute towards that, so you can't take it just at face value. The size of the molecule will be how much of a top or a base note something is. So this ethyl propionate, it's already pretty much completely gone the smell, even though I only put that on a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I'll hexanoate. I can still smell that a little bit. It's already faded away quite a lot. So let's go and see what else we have. I've got ethyl butyrate. Now this is one I use in the strawberry accord. This one, I've actually got a 10% dilution right here. I do have a 1% dilution, which would be a lot better, but I didn't uh, manage to find that in time for this video. So we've got the 10% one of ethyl butyrate. And already from this distance, I can smell that the ethyl butyrate is this really super pungent smell. If I smell it closely, I can smell a fruitiness, but it's kind of like a sickening fruitiness. It's imagine you had um, like Haribo sweets and then you made it so strong that it was actually kind of almost like painful for your nose. And that's uh, the thing about esters. So especially these fruity esters like your uh, ethyl propionates, your allyl hexanoates, your ethyl butyrates, um, you really want to dose them just at quite a low amount. I would say you definitely want to have a 1% dilution or less to start evaluating them properly. And then when you go start using them in your formulas, again, you probably want to use lower dilutions and so m less concentrated dilutions and use them in small amounts. And bear in mind that a lot of these things will just be essentially tweaking your top notes and making them smell more fruity. So again, this one, the ethyl butyrate and also its neighbor, the ethyl to methyl butyrate. These are both used in the strawberry accord. So if you're interested in me talking a bit more about those, you can go and watch my video on the strawberry accord. So then, what else have we got here? I've also got octyl acetate. Now this one is quite interesting, I found. And the reason for that is because this one is not your classic kind of fruity or cheesy, that kind of thing, that kind of ester smell that you might expect. Uh, this one, so again, it's a 1% here. To me, it reminds me a lot of frankincense, so kind of incense you'd find in a church. And you might also notice that this one is an acetate, so I really could have, I guess, gone over this in my acetates video. But because it's an acetate, it's still an ester. So this one, yeah, it smells really... I would say kind of like soapy. It's got this uh, really clean kind of incense, soapy kind of candle, or not really candle, but that direction kind of smelling thing. Um, if you've ever burned frankincense resin on its own, you'll immediately recognize the smell. And I think actually this is found in frankincense, which I guess makes a lot of sense. Um, and again, this one is very much a top note. And it adds, I would say it's, I think it's quite difficult to use this because because of the soapiness, it doesn't necessarily blend well with a lot of things. Uh, but I would like to find a use for this someday um, because I do quite like the way it smells. I've heard also this is found in some citrus fruits in smaller amounts. So things like oranges and lemons, I guess in the peel, you can find a little bit of this. So yeah, that one's kind of cool too. I've got, isoamyl isovalerate here. So yeah, if I remember correctly, the isovalerates are another subclass of ester. And I've heard a lot mentioned before that isovalerates are good for doing things like blueberries. 
So not so much the red berries. Now, if I go and smell this at 1%, immediately to me, it's very strange because it's got like halfway between like a weird kind of cheesy, like <laughs> um, old laundry scent, but also a blueberry scent at the same time. It's got this strange kind of really strong ester thing about it as well. So I've never made a blueberry accord, but I imagine if you're gonna make a blueberry accord, maybe you would start with something like a strawberry accord and you would take out the things that are making it more strawberry. So maybe for example, the ethyl butyrate and add something more like isoamyl isovalerate instead and see how it ends up. So again, that one's kind of interesting too. And what else have I got here? Oh, the other thing I've got is phenoxyethyl isobutyrate. So this is something I haven't really uh, smelled much. I have never really used it before. But the reason I thought I would pull this one out is because if you look at the molecule for this one, it's a lot larger than the other esters. I haven't timed yet how long this lasts on the scent strip, but I assume it lasts a lot longer. And also the other thing about this one is, even though it's at 10%, it's a lot more subtle. It's nowhere near as strong as the other esters. So I assume part of the reason that these other esters smell so strong, I guess part of it is because they're so volatile, a lot of them, and they're such top notes, that so much is evaporating at once that it's all hitting your nose. But with this phenoxyethyl isobutyrate, it's a lot more subtle. And it reminds me a little bit of phenethyl alcohol, which makes sense because it's got this phenoxy group. So it's got this um, aromatic ring inside it. So structurally, it's slightly similar. But it's also got, a, I think, a little bit of sweetness to it as well. And it's, it reminds me a little bit of a rose scent. So I imagine if you're making some kind of rose perfume, rose accord, some kind of floral fruity perfume, and you want something that helps pull that together, maybe this would be a good thing to use there. Um, but again, I'm no expert on this kind of thing. <laughs> um, I just thought it'd be interesting to smell it, so. So yeah. Anyway, that's some esters. And of course, there are loads, loads more than this. I've got more, but I didn't want to go through all of them. Um, I really like esters myself. I think they're really good for doing things like top notes, especially because I like fruity smells quite a lot. And it can be a nice alternative to just things like citruses. Um, but that said, I do think you want to dose them very carefully, definitely dilute them a lot. Otherwise, you're going to be confused as to why they kind of smell repulsive when actually it's because you didn't dilute them down enough in the first place. So those are my kind of tips for esters. That's what I recommend. And I'd really just recommend that you go and kind of explore the world of esters for yourself and have a look and see which ones you might like and maybe find some interesting esters, uh, maybe that are a bit more unusual and find something that you can use in your perfume because I think it's a great way to add kind of a signature uh, thing to your kind of top note or your impact, um, that initial thing when you open the bottle of your perfume. So yeah, that's my video on esters. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.